Hello. Is this on? We're on? Okay. Great. Morning, everyone. It's really lovely to see you. And well done to you all for being here on time. I'm always impressed by punctuality, so well done. Now, I want to give you some um, practicalities for the day. Uh, toilets are the most important thing, obviously. And there are toilets on this floor. There's one just to your right there when you come out, which anyone can use. If you go further down the hall, ladies, on the left-hand side, going straight down, you will find loos for you. Gents, you need to, if that one loo is not free, you need to go upstairs, um, and you'll see signs going up there. There are also individual loos just there by the second lot of doors, and there's another set of individual loos upstairs. So there are lots of loos on this floor and upstairs. Yesterday, at about 3 o'clock, we lost all our water in the building. So I had images of sending you across to the railways to do your thing. <laughs> Luckily, the water is back, and so you will now be able to use the loos. Um, you will have noticed earlier we had some artwork up of our children. Uh, and I want to let you all know that we are currently looking for an art teacher as well as a maths teacher. So if you have any friends, you want to spread the word, art and maths is what we're looking for for September. Um, right, other practicalities. Uh, the hashtag, Michaela, is what it is. Uh, Michaela, that's essentially Michael with an A. Um, you will all have heard the joke many times that I must have named the school after Michael Gove, um, which would be a very strange thing to do to use a feminine version of his name. But uh, incredibly, I, I hear this often um, on Twitter where people are saying this, and I think these people are very, very strange indeed. Um, so you will tweet today, if you want, with the hashtag Michaela. And if you are asking a question, and we do want all questions tweeted today. Uh, so one of our teachers will be looking at all the questions that have been tweeted and we will do it that way because we just have a problem with roaming mics. So we need you to tweet your questions and if you tweet a question you'll put hashtag Michaela on there and the appropriate hashtag that's on the windows. It's also on your program. So if it's me it's ask KB so you don't have to write out the whole of Catherine. Um, if it's Barry, ask Barry. If it's Joe, ask Joe. Ask Katie, and so on, right? So hashtag Michaela plus hashtag ask whoever it is. If you're just tweeting a statement, then you just write down hashtag Michaela. Okay. Can I just see, because I'm interested, who has... So we've had two events before. We had an event um, uh, here, uh, I don't know, about a year and a half ago. And then earlier this year... Uh, actually, maybe it was a year ago. And then earlier this year, we had another event at City Hall. And I'm just interested to see how many people have been to one of those events. Right, so most of you have not been to either. That's really interesting. Okay, fantastic. I'm really pleased to hear that because we love spreading the word about Michaela. Um, the other thing is, is that we're really interested, as the day goes by, as the day goes by today, um, if you have ideas and you think, oh, I really would have loved to have heard about this topic or I wanted to find this out today, we will do another event in the future. So please tweet us and say, actually, next time, can you do this? Can you do that? Uh, we'd be really interested in, in your thoughts. Uh, the other thing to say is we're all in here. Uh, we have a morning break. Then we have lunch and we have an afternoon break. But between the different sessions, there's no break. So I'll jump up and I'll introduce the next speaker. They'll speak. I'll jump up, introduce the next speaker. They'll speak. And we just have the breaks that are set in your program. Right. Um, the other thing to say is that today you'll be hearing from the staff at Michaela, some of them. And uh, the staff at Michaela really are just extraordinary. And I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, thank them because it is such a great privilege to work with all of them. Uh, you know, I am in such admiration of their honesty and their courage, uh, their determination and their drive. Um, you know, it, 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 it's amazing, really, how much trust they have given me and they have given the school. Um, and I'm very grateful to them. And so you will be hearing from some incredible teachers today. Um, Right, that's my practical stuff done, I think. So, I am speaking today 
Let me bring the mic closer. Okay. I am speaking today about ripping up the rule book. Is that okay? Um, like this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. You can hear me? Everybody can hear me? You can hear me at the back? All right. We can hear me out in cyberspace? Fantastic. All right. So, today I'm talking about ripping up the rule book. Now, I don't know if there's actual rules. You know, it's not so much that there are rules that we're breaking. It's more that we are thinking differently, is what I'd say, about a number of things. And so some of those things we'll be talking about today. Um, and it's really exciting when you're thinking differently. And I know that if you're here, you are also thinking differently. I think in education at the moment, there is a, a revolution going on. And uh, we hope that we are part of that revolution. Uh, there is so much that needs to be done in education. And so to all of you and anyone who's listening to me outside of here, um, I want to invite you all to join the revolution. Um, and to be on the right side of history, uh, because we will be on the right side of history, I promise you. And while there are people who might argue with us and, uh, and fight that revolution, I promise you we will be on the right side of history when that time comes. Um, what is amazing about the Michaela staff is that they are willing to question everything they've always believed. Um, and, and that's what we're about, is questioning kind of what we would take to be known truths uh, in education and, and trying to do things differently. Um, and so we've written our book, uh, as, as you've all had a copy now. And um, we wrote this book because we wanted to explain some of our methods and uh, some of our values uh, about what makes us different. And you have the opportunity today to buy lots of books. Uh, there are two stations upstairs and downstairs, and they're being ch sold very cheaply if you buy more than one. So it is a great opportunity for Christmas presents, etc., for your friends and teacher friends in particular. I'm not sure anybody outside of teaching uh, will be reading this <laughs> and how many want to read about drill and didactic teaching, but hey, you never know. Um, what is particularly nice about the book is at the end, we have lots of examples of our pupils' work uh, because obviously the question that people always ask is, well, okay, you're doing it differently, but does it work, right? <laughs> and uh, one way of, of seeing whether or not it works is through the examples of the work at the back of the book. But um, another way is simply by coming to visit us and seeing what we do. And I know many of you have, have been to see us already. So we have three-year groups at the moment, uh, 360 children, 120 in each year group. So we have years seven, eight, and nine. We will eventually grow to 840. And one of the things that people say, they say, well, you've only got three-year groups, so what's it going to be like when you have 840? It won't possibly work when that's the case. And I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I can't promise you that it will work. Uh, we just have to wait and see what happens. I think a school is as strong as its systems and its staff and uh, the way in which they row together. And um, I believe, I believe... I don't know, but I believe that the way in which we are here at Michaela and what we have built, the strength of that inner core, I do believe that it will be the same when we are at 840. Um, my thing has always been year nine is the difficult year, and if we get to the end of this year and we've still kept it, that we will sail through. Um, but that can only be seen with time. And, um, and I'm grateful to all of you that you are willing to give us your time uh, and to believe in us, uh, in us enough to, to come and visit the school, to come and spend your day with us today, despite the fact that we haven't proved ourselves with a full school. So, what do I mean when we talk about ripping up the rule book? There are various things that we don't like in education. Um, and the things that we don't like, we don't like wasting time. Uh, we hate it. I'm always saying, I can't be dealing with that. <laughs> I'm not spending my time on that. And um, bureaucracy is one of those big time wasters. And every decision that we make in the school, we're always thinking, how can we make sure 
that it reduces the amount of bureaucracy for staff or the amount of wasted time for staff. So what people will often say is that we're very nimble and quick in our decisions and we never waste time. People aren't spending ages putting data into some spreadsheet for no reason. That doesn't happen here. Other things that we don't like, and you'll hear more about that from Jess Lund, uh, in particular when it comes to marking, for instance, one of those things that we think, it's a waste of time. Um, some marking isn't a waste of time, so there's bits, but even then when we do that kind of marking, we make sure, so the assessments that they might do twice, well, I don't want to get into it because Jess is going to go into it in more detail, but um, we do it very, very thinly with a number. You know, we don't do the targets and all that kind of nonsense. And that, again, is something else that we think is a waste of time targets and performance related pay and ridiculous heavy handed performance management. I can't stand any of it. Um, and so we don't do it. Uh, when I have at the end of this term a performance management session with staff, they'll pop in to see me and I'll say, so tell me, how are you being supported? Is there anything we could do differently? Anything you can say to me? What always happens, which is really funny, is that they say, well, no, because if there had been an issue, I would have told you before. <laughs> and then I say, okay. And they say, is there any issue that you have with me? And I say, well, no, because otherwise I would have told you before. And then that's the end of the meeting. And then off they go. Um, so that's another thing that we do very differently. We don't do targets for pupils. We don't do targets for staff. I mean, I've never understood this idea. I have three targets this year, and I must just tick those targets off, and I'm not doing anything else. I'm just doing those three targets. It is utter madness, if you ask me. We don't do that. What else do we do? We don't do differentiation, right? We don't believe in any of that. Uh, we don't believe in all this craziness of telling teachers, oh, but they're jumping out of their chairs because you haven't differentiated properly. We believe in having high standards for everyone. Now, we do stream, right? We do stream our classes, so we're not saying all children are the same, but we're saying that this idea of having several different worksheets in a class is madness. Um, we're also saying that that kind of differentiation actually means that the, the ones who struggle the most are left behind. We don't believe in personalization, right? Now that is something, everybody says it, and any parent thinks, oh, isn't it wonderful? It's been personalized for me because my child is unique. Children all learn the same stuff in the same kinds of ways, right? They, it, is, it, it is just a nonsense to suggest otherwise. And it, it, it just taps into that, um, the parent, the par it makes the parent feel really good. Um, and they think, oh, my child is unique. Um, which is why we're all writing out individual targets, but then funnily enough, you're always writing out the same target over and over and over again. I wonder why. Because they're all making the same mistakes, that's why. So best to just preempt the mistakes at the beginning, and then you can feed back from the front. Doesn't mean teachers aren't reading the books. They're seeing what kinds of mistakes they're making. They're all making the same kinds of mistakes, and they can then stand up at the front of the class and feed back enormous time saving for teachers, which means that the teachers can get on with things that they actually need to do to make the school run well. Um, so, I've said, actually, I've got my list here. I've said marking and performance rate of pay. I mean, I haven't gone into the performance rate of pay, but it's an absolute nonsense. Um, our last event at City Hall, I was arguing with Jonathan Simons against performance rate of pay, and incredibly, on the stage, he changed his mind. <laughs> so he said, well, actually, I, I, I'm not really sure whether or not it works, and I think I, I've, I've changed my I mean, this is what he, I couldn't believe it. So, I mean, you know, I thought, well, I must have done a pretty good job then, right? <laughs> I mean, the fact is it does not work. And the reason why it doesn't work, um, and the thing that we get so right here, is that schools work because people work as a team, right? You are a team. That is what we are here. We all row together. And um, if we didn't row together, we would all fall apart. And all PRP does is it breaks you up. And it, 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 it puts one staff member, he says, well, why am I going to take that naughty kid out if my pay is going to re rely on the fact that I have to get these grades with these, with these kids and they're naughty enough? I'm not going to help you by taking out another naughty kid and putting him into my class. There's just one example of why performance-related pay will destroy a school. Um, other things we don't like, grading. 
of lessons. I mean, it's just a nonsense. I'm, you're going to come in twice a year, and then you perform, and it's this whole big stress, and you spend two, three weeks organizing this one lesson that you're going to get graded on. I mean, I don't understand why heads would do that. I care about what's happening in the lessons every day. I don't care about some stupid performance when they, uh, a teacher can act like a seal while I'm just, I mean, I, it's so ridiculous. I don't understand why anyone does it. Um, what matters is what's going on in classrooms every day. And so our whole observation feedback loop, I mean, it's totally different from what you would find from other, at other schools. When teachers come here initially, they get tons and tons of feedback, like every lesson all the time from various different teachers. And there's no sense of you being judged. It's about making, helping you to become Michaela. We talk about becoming Michaela all the time with the pupils and with the, uh, and with the teachers. Um, and then the other big thing that we don't like, you know, I'm realizing I have, okay, I'm just looking at the clock because I couldn't see the clock. Um, and in fact, we might want to move the clock over here somewhere, because otherwise the speaker can't see it. Um, Ofsted, right? We hate Ofsted. And um, I suspect you all agree with this on this, but I mean, it is again a nonsense to have an inspector come in and in a day and a half make some judgment about your school, just like a grade and a lesson makes no sense. Uh, the DFE, uh, they send people in here and they say, well, you could get anywhere from a one to a four. That's what they say. Because you're so different, it's really difficult to tell. And that, I mean, there's something wrong with the inspectorate system when you can get anywhere from a one to a four in your inspection. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I have such admiration for the staff at Michaela, you know? Because it isn't easy doing this. Um, I think they'll all tell you how wonderful it is working at Michaela and how happy they are working at Michaela, but it isn't easy dealing with the outside world. It isn't easy dealing with the criticism. It isn't easy dealing with the criticism that might come from family and friends who don't understand what we do because all pioneers get shot at, right? All pioneers are sometimes not understood and that's hard for them. And they come and they see me and they say, my mother said this, my father said this, what do I say back? I don't understand. I, you know, ha I know that what we're doing is right, but they don't understand. And it can be undermining. It's hard. The hardest thing I think that I have to deal with are the detractors from outside. I mean, every day you have your issues in school and you're running, but it's such a beautiful place to be. And I'm so happy that I'm working with the staff that we've got and the pupils, it's just wonderful. But the hardest thing is what comes from outside. And in particular, this Ofsted business, which is so ridiculous because, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I think they'll probably give us a two. I think the reason why they'll give us a two is you'd have to be very brave to give us a one because we are so different. I don't think they'll give us a three or a four because of the results. The, the, the progress that the children make is so extraordinary. Again, I don't see how they could give us a three or a four. So I'm betting on a two. And I don't really care, ultimately. I mean, it, so many schools bend themselves inside out, and that's something that we do very differently again here. We don't care about Ofsted, so we do what is right for the kids. We don't think, well, Ofsted wants this, so we better do what Ofsted wants. Um, and that makes a big difference to the way in which the school is run. The other thing we don't like are exams. And what I mean by that are the GCSE exams and the way in which teaching nowadays has become, um, it's become teaching that, you know, you know that's on the exam, so you've got to teach that because you're going to be judged on that because we don't like league tables because league tables are silly because when, you're, when you've got league, league tables, that means that all teachers think to themselves, well, teaching is simply teaching what's on that exam, because that is what I'm going to be judged by. And teaching anything else, well, it doesn't matter. Now, we do things very differently here. We teach this, right? And in the end, the children will be examined on that. But because we believe in cultural literacy, because we believe in our children having a huge bank of knowledge, we teach that, and then we'll end up judged on that. So in fact, when our GCSE results come out, and I believe they will be good, they will not really demonstrate just how powerful this school is. They won't, because they will not be judging the children on everything. And we will be competing with other schools who have taught this and are judged on that, while we, in fact, have been teaching that. Um, so what do we love? Katie Ashford's going to talk to you about reading. Uh, we have reading... You know, reading is across the school. In every lesson they're reading, they're reading every evening. 
library books. The li She's going to go into the details. But every teacher is pushing reading with the children. So when we make our incredible progress, there's a reason. It isn't just left up to the English department. Maths, same thing. Every night they have maths homework. We are all pushing maths with them. We're all asking the year sevens their timetables in the break hall. So maths, again, is supported across the school. We are a team and we row together. Um, Olivia will tell you about drill and didactic teaching and how we use that in the school and how we, it's one of the main reasons why we get the results that we do. It's through our teaching methods. Um, Johnny will tell you about our silent corridors and our no excuses behavior, um, which is so important. If you don't have excellent behavior, the teachers cannot teach. And as far as I'm concerned, my role in the school is to ensure that there is consistency across the school and that the behavior is there so the teachers can do their thing. And if the teachers can't do it, it's my fault, right? I am responsible for the behavior in the school. And if they're not behaving, it is my fault. Um, we centralize attentions. That's one way in which we support our teachers. We also centralize homework. That's one way in which we support our parents and teachers. It means it's always the same thing. It's very easy then for parents to support and I can hold parents to account when they don't do it because it is so clear and simple. And staff can then hold pupils to account if it isn't done. And because the detentions are centralized, it's very easy to administer. We believe in dead white men. We believe that inner city children should access what has been written by the greats. And we make no apology for that because it isn't fair when those children go out into the world and don't know who Charles Dickens is. It's not fair that you should know and that they shouldn't. So we teach dead white men unapologetically. We believe in candor. So one of the reasons why when my staff come to me and for their performance management meeting, and I mean, I have it there just in case, you never know, there may be something, so I keep it there. And um, the reason why they say I would have already told you is because we have a system of candor in the school. Every organization, not just schools, struggle with this. Every organization has people in some corner going, well, she said this, and he said that, and did you believe this, and did you believe that? It happens everywhere. Every so many schools have teachers in their staff rooms saying, senior team don't do this, and senior team don't do that. Senior team are then in their, the head's office going, teachers don't do this, the teachers don't do that. that. That is what's happening. Now, we have a candor chart in the staff room. Uh, people get stars for being candid with each other. Because it's not that there's anything wrong with anybody in any organization. It's that when you're working with people, there will always be misunderstandings. People will always rub up against each other. I always say to staff, I guarantee you that in the next month, you will have an issue with somebody. You need to voice it, right? And somebody needs to be encouraging everybody to talk about the issues with whoever it is. You know, I'm offended that you're wearing glasses. I'm going to come up to you and say, I'm offended. And you'll say, oh, I didn't realize that my glasses offended you. And we can then have that conversation. <laughs> um, so, uh, key thing that we believe in, personal responsibility, okay? If you want one value, right, Michaela's about, it is about personal responsibility. Parents need to be responsible for themselves and their children. Children need to be responsible for themselves and staff need to be responsible for themselves. And there is far too much blame in the modern 21st century on somebody else. It wasn't my fault, it was his fault. She did it, miss. He did it, miss. Oh, but I, I've got five children, I can't cope. We all have a duty to be responsible for ourselves. And we need to take that duty seriously. That doesn't mean we don't mess up now and again. We mess up, and then we apologize, we learn from it, and then we move on. That is what life should be. And that is a value that is absolutely fundamental to what we do here at Michaela. Everyone knows they are responsible for their bit in the machine. So what I mean by that is we are a team. 
We all have our ore and we are all responsible for that ore and looking after it so that we can move forward. If each person's going, but it's not my fault, it's this and that, then the ore start going in different directions and you don't move forward. Everybody needs to be responsible for themselves. Um, and your mindset then is really important. The mindset of every member of staff and every pupil we say, come on, pick yourself up. You've got a demerit, that's a good thing because your teacher is helping you, right? So that is why those of you who have seen on Twitter the thank you cards that we get, the, those of you who have visited, the children who stand up and give appreciations to their teachers to say, thank you, sir, for giving me a detention because I know that it is making me into a better person. That is something that we drive with the kids. They understand that we are on their side. We get them to buy into what we do, and if you come and talk to them, they will all tell you. I remember we had this Ofsted guy uh, that the DFE sent out, and he came in to look around, and he really didn't like the place because instinctively he didn't like the silence. Instinctively he didn't like the order. And instinctively, I don't think he particularly liked me. And... Um, <laughs> And uh, I put him in to lunch and I told him about a particular boy who was our naughtiest pupil. And I said, oh, there he is over there. Why don't you go sit next to him? So he went over. And then um, later on, he came back to me and I said, so how was it? And he said, well, you know, he really likes the school. I said, oh, right. So what did he say? And he said, he likes the school because you make him behave. That's what he said. And by the end of the day, this man had turned, and I promise you, we spent the whole day arguing. I just argued and argued and argued with him. And by the end of the day, he had turned. He's since visited our school, I'd say, about another three times, and he's our biggest fan now. He loves us. Now, the problem with Ofsted is that they only have a day and a half for us to try and change their minds about their expectations. This man has been visiting us for a whole year, and for that reason, has been able to change his mind. And that is what I so respect in our staff and in all of you. People need to be willing to change their minds about something so that the revolution can happen. Because it is happening, and I know you are all a part of it. And I just want you to go one step further because we owe it to our children. We do this through CPD every Monday. We look, training our staff in how to question things. We read articles, we read books. I have an extraordinary English department who are bridge books, so it means that we can read six pages instead of an entire book. And then we discuss the ideas in those books that helps us change our minds about the things we've always believed were true. So, what I would say is, come and visit us if you haven't visited us before. Read the book. Think to yourself, is it possible that maybe I've been mistaken about certain things that I always thought were true? I've done that. Even now, I learn constantly about the school. So what I mean by that is, I go around the school and I'm constantly amazed by what I see. I cannot believe. So when we set up the school, I knew it could be better. I knew that we could do things differently. I did not know that this was possible. I didn't know it. I didn't know that children could behave so well. Children from challenging families, half our children are, uh, are, are, are um, uh, what is it called? Pupil premium, and, um, <laughs> sorry. Half our children are before, uh, pupil premium. We, we've, got, we've got challenging families. However, <laughs> you would have no idea if you met them. They all seem like angels. It is such a wonderful place to be. When you go into their classrooms and you see the essays that they write, when you see teachers who have been teaching for three months in their classrooms with perfect order and extraordinary learning going on, you, I am amazed at what can be achieved. So, I ask you to visit us. I ask you to open your minds. I ask you to join us in the revolution because you want to do what is right by children. First up, who is first up actually? I don't have my, um, I need to, re oh, it's Mike, yes. Mike joined us in September. Um, Mike is going to talk about his first impressions because he joined us in September. Um, Mike just led lunch yesterday, was it yesterday? Thursday. Thursday, he led lunch on Thursday. 
so marvellous. It was so marvellous because I looked at him and I thought, isn't it amazing how someone can come here and in September and now they are just, they're able to run the school. <laughs> that is what's amazing. It's an amazing place and I really would love to have you all visit again. Mike, I'll hand over to you. Thank you.